There's something. There's something in there, like a like a, uh, and thus began the journey. And thus began the journey oh. to bank some episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Let's do it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of This Is My Bourbon Podcast. I am your host, Perry. This is a banked episode with my buddy, Swan, who is the usual co-host of the show. Mm-hmm. Hi, Swan. Hello. Uh, this is um, banked episode number two, I guess. Uh, we, took a, we took a day break, came back, collected ourselves. Um, I fell asleep on the couch after we got done recording. <laughs> Yeah, I did for about five minutes, and I was like, oh, this is not my bed, and then I went downstairs. And I, yeah, so you, you're going to witness, I think, us either slowly losing our minds, or just um, carrying on as usual. Yeah, I've lost that a long time ago. I'm yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going, going on, on with it. <laughs> we are warming up with a little bit of Russell's small batch, I, you know... Flying blind is going to be difficult for a little while. Yeah, because we can have take a, my glasses off if that helps. Because <laughs> we have a set set path for what we're going to be doing at least for the next five weeks, uh, and it's not going to be just you know we're we're trying to bump these up to it not just being us reviewing everything and tasting everything, but this is a going to be a five week project of us tasting through the new benchmark line. Yeah, and I think, honestly, look at their branding. Benchmark is literally setting the standard, essentially. it's That's what it's supposed to be doing. I think so, too. And it, it, I think, by all accounts, it seems like this is a huge step up from what what the, the, uh, the old product was, that 80 proof that I said gave me headaches. Yes. <laughs> Uh, after the first sip, so I, I'm I am looking forward to getting into these. Um, I, I I'm I'm tentative about the way that I feel about them, though. I don't want to, you know, go. Oh, it's gonna be amazing, and I'm gonna jump right into it and give it full marks and thumbs up and whatnot. Yeah, no, it's I think it's appropriate <laughs> to be cautiously optimistic. Yeah, yeah. I'm also a little tired, so we're gonna use some bourbon to to cure that. <laughs> it just adds to it, but I'm here for it. Let's, let's yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens. Before we do that, though, Swan, is there anything to report on what you've been drinking recently? Yes. I went home and had uh, some Knob Creek picks. I had some, like, um, I think it was one of the ones that uh, Rabarge sent us in. It was the uh, Big Red pick, I think. Mm-hmm. Had the rest of that. Heck, yeah. That thing is awesome. Yeah, dude. Is So I finished that off last night. Uh, and then, uh, fell asleep on the couch and then fell asleep in my bed and woke up to message you to say, we're still doing this again tonight, right? (laughs) So here we are. Yeah. And, uh, here we are indeed. And there was a split second this morning when I woke up where I thought to myself, I don't know if we should do this again tonight, but you know what? We love torture. Let's do it. We're committed. That's why we're drinking Benchmark. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, I, I, I'm excited to do do some banked episodes. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I don't really have anything new to report. I mean, you know, I finished off what I had in my glass from that little combination of Rebel Yell bottles, and that's really been about it. Yeah. So you uh, believe it or not, and the audience is going to be shocked by this. You pour a little heavier than I do with most of these episodes. So by the time I'm leaving and I'm ready to go home and I'm just kind of having a good time and pour a little more, just as a nightcap, the nightcap's already been poured for you, so it's you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Hence the Perry pour. Baby life's not going to make that any easier. No, nah, it's okay. Or better. No. Hey, before we get into this, though, thank you all so much. If this is the first time that you are listening to the podcast, uh, please give us a subscribe, rate, and review. Uh, in the iTunes podcast app, follow us on all the social medias at my bourbon pod, all that good stuff. We'll wrap that back up at the end of the episode, but I'm, uh, I'm just ready to get into this, man. 
Me too. Me too. I don't I don't know what this is going to be like. Um it's it's just it, it, this is our flying blind. <laughs> it's essentially. So, let's let's do it. So what exactly are we starting with here? Well, we are starting with here on week one of the Benchmark series, Top Floor. All right. Where it says, Elevation Matters. <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> it's rough, dude. It's rough. So, We're for those like who... like tall guys. Elevation Matters. <laughs> <laughs> for folks who don't really know uh, why creating a product, the, the Top Floor or like top floor matters, uh, it, or why elevation matters. Um, that's because the, the, the whiskey itself will age faster the higher up in the rickhouse it is. Yeah, it's got more temperature fluctuation. Right, and it, it, but it's also being exposed to more heat, um, so it's going to contract and, and expand uh, in the barrel. It's going to receive a lot more of the oak flavors than something in the middle of the rickhouse, and especially bottles at the, or excuse me, barrels at the bottom of the rickhouse mm-hmm. would. So it's not necessarily something that you would consider hyper aging. It's just, well, I guess maybe in a way you could call it that. But this is, um, yeah, it, it it still says Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey on it, so it's at least two years old. Uh, but there is no age statement anywhere, so I'm assuming it's at least four. I think Buffalo Trace is pretty good with their their labels and, and whatnot. So, um, yeah. Also, I want to say thank you to the Brennickies for sending these bottles to us. They oh, helped, the Brennickies. They helped us out in a big way by uh, shipping these over to us. And, you know, it's all for the sake of content. Yes. All right. Swan, you ready for this? Let's do it. What a cork pop. <laughs> <laughs> All of these are still cracks. Yeah. They're still just uh yeah, they're not they're not corks. I'm trying to pour a little bit lighter. Hey, it's your house, man. <laughs> I've got to be transported after this. No one wants to pick me up and put me in a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not even your lovely fiance. No, she'll just be like, I'll come back when you say we're done. That's fine. <laughs> you can always sleep in the guest room if you need to. <laughs> You're on vacation. <laughs> so this is 86 proof. Oh, okay. Um, it, it's it's one of the lower, of course, one of the lower proof products that are available from Buffalo Trace. Uh, 80 proof, of course, is where they're going to land at the lowest for, for bourbon products. And uh, you know what's interesting about this, too? I cannot really think of another brand or another product that... Um, that has a it has a, a, a bottle like this. There's nothing else that I could think of that came from a top floor of a Rick House, except for maybe like, you know, the 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 cheaper brands that they're just trying to you know make money with. Warehouse C Tornado Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? We'll get some of that and compare. <laughs> Let's just throw that one into the mix. Uh, but this is a, a, a really unique product. And what you're going to find over the next few weeks as well is that we're going to be trying to compare these bottles to other ones that are of the same caliber, in the same field. Uh, maybe not necessarily price, but at least they're going to have you know similarities in terms of uh, what their, their production would look like. Uh, so unfortunately this week, like I said, there's not... A, there's just not another top floor branded product out there on the market. No, and it's funny too because, like, on the front of the bottle they say the bourbon standard underneath the elevation matters, which I, you kind of get from the name. That's the gimmick yeah, they're yeah, going yeah, of for. Course. And then on the side, uh, it says that uh, followed native trail overland that led to the Great Buffalo Crossing, where the brothers surveyed the land, now home to the world's most award-winning distillery, Buffalo Trace. The surveyor marks left behind are known as benchmarks. Whoa. So, <laughs> what? Are we talking about the surveyor's marks? Or are we talking about the standard? Or both? I guess it's just the double entendre. At I that guess point. it's I guess it's both, but that's really bizarre. That's something I'd never heard of before. Yeah, I had no clue. I just figured they were playing on that gimmick of like benchmark, this is how yeah, bourbon yeah, yeah. should taste kind of thing. Yeah, I think that might have been what the brand was originally. I mean, it wasn't conceived by Buffalo Trace, I don't think. I think that there was a a benchmark distillery. Yeah, it's uh, just land now 
now home to the world's most award winning. Yeah, so it looks like they got bought out by Sazerac or Buffalo Trace, one of the two. Yeah, let's uh, let's do a little uh, little look see here on the old Google machine. Distilled, aged, and bottled by Buffalo Trace Distillery. Uh, this is coming from oh, that's Bourbon and Banter. I thought it was Wikipedia. <laughs> I benchmark old number eight bourbon was created by Seagram's in the late 1960s as a luxury brand and was originally named benchmark bourbon. It was produced at the four roses distillery when Seagram's owned it. Interesting. Okay. I Sazerac slash Buffalo trace markets it as a cheaper alternative to Jack Daniels. And it shows in the old number eight on the black label. You know, and they didn't step away (laughs) from that Jack Daniels bottle. No, they did not. No, they did not. And and back in the day, you know, I, I re- it's been a while since I've had Jack Daniels, but I I, I leaned more towards uh, Benchmark when I was kind of cutting my teeth, and uh, now it just gives me headaches. So that's fair. Let's find out about this uh, this top floor though, because I I nosed it already. Ooh, okay. It's a pretty pleasant nose. It is. It's very vanilla heavy. I'm getting a lot of spice with it as well. Yeah, vanilla and some spice. Man. Everything is mostly nice. The oak the oak content is definitely present. Yes. It is Oak City. And it is dark, so we've lined this up with a couple of the other ones, and this one is very dark. Surprisingly so, yeah. A couple of the other ones, the all the other ones. <laughs> but like the foolproof, I mean, it's clearly the darkest. But I was really, really surprised at how dark this uh, this top floor yeah. was going to be. I'm ready for it. I'm, I'm ready for it. I, yeah. I need to get into it. It's definitely not as dense as the nose. No. But it, but it delivers, though. It does. There's a note at the end of it that kind of gives you that, like, Ooh. wet tobacco smell. Yeah. Oh, there's a... Ah, there's a tongue heat too. Yeah. Woo, man. But that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> it is. But from what <laughs> I remember from Jack Daniels, lacking the banana flavor, this is kind of in the same ballpark. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've got a very specific process they put their stuff through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one has got its own specific process of sorts. Sure. Um. I don't know. It's gimmicky. I don't think it's going to be my favorite of this lineup, but who knows? I've not had the other ones. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Let's talk price, too, while we're kind of letting the first sip mellow. Uh, this is fourteen ninety nine. Mm. That's a crazy price for this, I feel like. It is. Um, you know, it, if, if you're looking at products in the same ballpark, usually what you're finding are, you know, 80-proof Jim Beam you know, uh, shoot, of course I'm blanking right now. Uh, any of the Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond products, maybe... Four Roses. Four though. Roses, uh, yellow label, brown label now, I yeah. guess. But uh, I don't know if any of those... if I Or if I'm drinking any this one over any of those. No, I think they're all in the same ballpark. And I think, too, at that point, they're all showing... Their profile a little, but not to their full degree. So yeah. I kind of have a hard time picking a favorite out of all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I had to compare it to anything on the shelf that I know that I would grab over this, it would be like J.W. Dant, T.W. Mm-hmm. Samuels. They're kind of in the same ballpark. Yeah, for sure. I do want to have a second sip, though, so I can... Right, the aftertaste kind of diminishes after the first one. It it does. I, the, I'm just not super crazy about the finish i think it leans a little strange it does i would say it just gets a little sour mm-hmm. i think it's the proof it definitely could Wait. be it say that again that definitely could be it yeah i i think the lower proof is really kind of impacting what some of those bolder flavors could be mm-hmm if they they allowed the the fact that it was on that top floor to shine through. Mm. Oh, there's a there's actually a really nice like French vanilla note towards the end that that I like quite a bit. I think the nose is is really good. I do too. I don't think that it's a showstopper, but I do think it's very inviting. 
Yeah. And really, the palette is not offensive by any means. I think that it's a little bit flat in some places. Um, it doesn't really coat your tongue on the palette. I think that's kind of left for the finish. Uh, no Kentucky hog to speak of. No. I think that it's a, a, a very, you know, it's a very quick finish <clears throat> in that regard. But I do think that the, like we were talking about with the lower proof, I think that you, you're kind of leaning towards getting those grains uh, from the mash bill that are, you know, would be kind of hidden if you actually left it at a higher proof and then you're getting the oak influence and everything. The oak is still there, <clears throat> excuse me, on, on the palate, but it definitely takes a, it, 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 it takes a side line. What am I trying to say here? Uh, it's not in the forefront. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. It's kind of like me at parties. It's hugging the wall. It's not doing much, <laughs> you know. Uh, but it showed up. It did. Yeah. I, I think this is interesting. I, I like that we read that article that said it pointed out that it was kind of a competitor to Jack Daniels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see this as kind of holding up well in a Jack and Coke. I'm putting quotation marks I, out I, there. I kind of agree with that. Yeah, because it's got that, like... You're definitely drinking bourbon, sour mash kind of finish. Yeah. Like uh, the real heavy-handed sour mash because there's plenty of sour mashes that don't have a sour note at the end of them. Yeah. But if I had, was not educated in bourbon and I was just drinking a, you know, Jack and Coke and they're like, hey, can I get Benchmark? This is like at this point kind of when you go to a restaurant and you're like, can I get a Diet Coke? And they're like, is Pepsi okay? <laughs> you know, this is the Pepsi. I, I think it would hand, handle it just fine. Yeah. It's definitely in the same ballpark, but it's not. It it does. It's lacking some of that weird bite that Jack Daniels has. So you listeners don't know this because the magic of editing or foresight, I guess. But uh, Swan and I took a little break to gather some 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 supplies to actually do a comparison between Jack and Coke and Benchmark and Coke. And I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen here. <laughs> this this was a very spur of the moment <laughs> decision that we made. Oh man. Whew. Okay. So what are we starting with? Benchmark. I started with. Well, I started with the Jack. Let's do it. <laughs> That's such a standard. Like it. It's. It's so inoffensive. Is. It's just kind of like. Okay. You know. Yeah, like it's just a, a classic, a classic drink. This is definitely going to be the caffeine that I needed to get me over the edge to keep recording. That's fair. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's just it's got enough bite to get through it. It's got kind of a weird complimentary cherry, like almost a banana flavor. Yeah, yeah. Just that comes through. It's just easy. Yeah, I mean it's definitely my preferred way of drinking Jack Daniels. <laughs> That's the only way I'll drink Jack Daniels. <laughs> Just the plain number seven. A lot of the products we've had that have been like the single barrels or like the rye and the fancier bottles. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind them. I, I mean, I like the the single barrel barrel proof mm -hmm. quite a bit. I mean, like way more than I thought I was going to. Um, but it is funny. So you also, when you ran out to go get supplies, um, also brought me a 375 of... Regular benchmark, eighty Listen, proof. We're pulling out all the stops. We got to make sure that we're really getting to the bottom of this benchmark of bourbon. So I'm confused here. Did you get this for us to try on its own? Are we doing another bourbon and coke? Are we? What's the What's the plan here, Swanee? Well, I thought that this top floor really tasted a lot like it needed to be in like kind of a Jack and Coke scenario. So just a top floor benchmark and, and Coke. So I was going to make one of those. The benchmark over there is just to intentionally give you a headache. Oh, great. Cool. Yeah, Thanks. Um, <laughs> I'm putting that on the bar then. <laughs> yeah. We'll have that at the end before bed. <laughs> yeah, just, just we're not. No, I'm cracking open the foolproof before bed. What are you talking about? That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I got to kill the COVID. <laughs> yeah. Is COVID still a thing by the time I have a baby? I'm I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be. It's too. floating around. Yeah, yeah. If not, we did it, guys. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! We did it finally. <laughs> I don't know, man. I I'm curious. I can I kind of nose the Jack Daniels and the this top floor back to back. 
the top floor is a lot more refined. There's definitely a quite a bit of bite. Okay. Uh, coming out of the, coming out of the Jack Daniels. The Jack Daniels is not the worst nose, though. I will say, I, I think that the bourbon community is just like, oh, Jack Daniels, man, man. Well, yeah, <laughs> they get, but they get it's, really. It's thick. popular for a reason. It is, yeah. And I'm not saying that it's the best thing in the world by any means, but it certainly can hold its own, I think. If I had to choose between this vodka and rum in an airplane bottle uh, on an actual airplane, I'm going Jack. Yeah. Yeah, no, 100%. So now we're moving on to the top floor benchmark in Coke. I just can't think of what else this release would be for. Like, it's such a specifically, like, weird... Yeah. Did you pour any of the of the benchmark? Yeah. It didn't look like you did. Oh, I got some in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't like my Jack and Cokes very strong. I like them really light. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'll go through two two liters of Coke and just to get through like half a bottle. This is also my uh, preferred way to drink Coke. It, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, my preferred method is when you go to the movie theater, which right now is not a thing, uh, and they have the Jack and Coke slushy oh, heck machine. Yes. Oh, Yes. This is more of what I was looking for. Yeah, so this is a little toned down. I think it smells better, personally. Oh, man. That is all cherries. But it's just cherry Coke. Cherry vanilla Coke. Cherry vanilla Coke. I like that. Oh, that's dangerous. That's scary. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I I'd honestly we... have like five of these before I knew what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> I've ever told you the story about when I, we went to New Orleans for the first. No, this was the second time I went. Um, we we went for a for a graphic design conference. Curtis was there too, actually. And we, you know, in New Orleans, you can go and buy drinks and roam around the city with them. And I was getting really tired of going in and ordering bourbon and cokes. And I went into to the bar, and they they had those like styrofoam cups and everything that yeah. you normally would put like a big mixed drink or a beer in or something. And I go, I would really like a bourbon and coke in that. Oh my gosh! And he goes, "You want a quadruple?" <laughs> I was like, "No, let's just do a triple." Should have done the quadruple. I mean, <laughs> it probably would have saved me time and money, but um, is what it is. Yeah. Um, this is really good. This is. I think is. this is better than the Jack and Coke. So uh, I don't know. I think they're appealing to their audience too with this because if you think about it, this the benchmark stuff's always been pointed at people that are not bourbon it's connoisseurs so by any means. Sorry, sorry. It's so good. You're, you're <laughs> yeah, you're good. It, but I mean, think about it. There's a stigma with top shelf. There's a stigma probably with top floor. People just look at it and they're like, oh, quality. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though they're going to go home and stick this in their Coke Zero. <laughs> uh, but I think it's good. It holds its own, it, its own just drinking it. It's a little a little sour twinge, but that is completely gone Ooh. with some Coke. And if they're comparing themselves to Jack Daniels, it's got to hold up in Coke. Man, I don't hate that at all. No. no. <laughs> I might have just rediscovered my love for bourbon and Cokes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a good one to do it with. I'm trying to lose weight before the baby gets here. <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to tell the calorie tracker about them. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course yeah, the not. bourbon and Cokes. It's free calories. Exactly. <laughs> well, I, I know that we, we did that just kind of as a fun little comparison, but we haven't actually reviewed the, the top floor, uh, and we need to do that. Uh, based on our review system here of nose, palate, finish, and price, each category is out of five, and then we tally everything up for a final score out of 20. Swan, I like the nose quite I a bit. I do like the nose. I think it's a very, it's definitely the strongest point. Yeah, I think so, too. Oh, man. Even going back, I mean, you, you know, the bottle itself has been open for probably, what, half an hour mm -hmm. now between pauses and breaks and everything. Uh, I think that it's really brought forth some of those oak notes uh, and and the the vanilla i think is what is the most prominent 
<clears throat> on this product. Yeah. For sure. I, I want to say, too, before we even get to the, the, the numeration. Is that a word? I don't know. It is now. Yeah, fine. I'll the, put it in Urban Dictionary tomorrow to be good. Thank you. Uh, by the way, if anybody doesn't know, Perry Poor in the Urban Dictionary. Just saying. <laughs> this does excite me for what these other products are going to be. I am really looking forward to to diving into the the rest of this. Um, Whoa, the coke came back with a vengeance. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, I like the nose quite a bit. I think I'm going to give it a three. Yeah, I'm I'm going to go three as well. Yeah, it, it's it's pleasant, but it's not earth shattering. No. I think that's the big takeaway. No, it's very one dimensional. Yeah. So, and, and one of the things we haven't really talked about, this is the same mash bill as Buffalo Trace bourbon, mm-hmm. which means it's the same mash bill as Eagle Rare, uh, George T. Stag as well. Um, yeah. So a lot of the, you know, the core products that aren't like Ancient Age or Blanton's or even Weller, uh, Weller, of course, being a, a weeded bourbon. In this case, it's a lower rye mash bill. Um, but when you when you compare it to these other products, basically what we're getting is a top shelf version, of, or excuse me, a top floor version of Buffalo Trace. Yeah. If if Buffalo Trace were exclusively bottled after being aged on the top floor of the Rick House, this is what it would taste like. So I, I and we're gonna dive a little bit more into the the Buffalo Trace line as we compare these products as well. And I'm excited to get to that, but right now, uh, it, it is really interesting that this is what, you know, what Buffalo Trace would be like in this instance. Palette, though? Palette's not the strongest thing. I think it, the further into this bourbon, the less excited I get about it, the nose being the strongest, so I'm going to give the palette a two and a half. I'm on board with that. And really, the finish is a two for me. Yeah, and I'm right. I'm right there with it. <laughs> price though, I went four and a half. See, what's really funny, like going back. Sorry, I'll, I'll get to the price in a minute. Um, mm-hmm. Going back to the palate after having it with Coke, mixed with Coke, I am noticing more of the cherry flavors. Yeah, I really am noticing where this shines as uh, a product itself, and I, I think that the proof does not do this justice. No. Again, we're going we're gonna to find out whether or not that's true as we move on uh, through these products. But th- this is, uh, I think it's good, it's just not great. I'm really excited for the foolproof, though. I am, too. <laughs> so I gave, the, I gave the finish a two. I'm not going to give the price a, a four. Um, I think that, you know, with it being basically the first iteration of what other people will probably base their own products off of uh, with uh, with a top floor release. Mm-hmm. I think that it's kind of setting the benchmark or setting the standard for what could... Uh, we did it! We came back around! We did it. It's like the Family Guy episode where they say the title of the movie in the movie and they point it out and they're so hey, excited about it. it. You yeah. said it! Hey, they did it! They did they the did thing! It. You know what's really grinding my gears? <laughs> Look out for Peter Griffin in an upcoming episode of Last Call on Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's not going to happen. Um, I, I think that this is really what people were, are going to base their own their own products off of. I do too. And I, I think it's the direct comparison to Jack Daniels is just spot on. I think so too. I think if anything, this is just a Jack Daniels like killer to me. Cause it's just taking a lot of the edge out of, a you know, Jack and Coke and just making it sweet. <sighs> we got to do it. We got to do what? What are we doing? Oh no, 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 no. Okay. Well, at least let me finish this. We have to, you know, we have to, yeah, it was coming eventually. So the, my, and really, we should have done this before we ever got to this new line. We're just putting it off. We just it doesn't exist. That's fine. I'm not comparing this to the to the foolproof. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Could you imagine? <laughs> We're not in the same room. <laughs> no, One no. tastes like licking a barrel. The other tastes like water. <laughs> <laughs> the shiver. 
Yeah, that's not good. In this one. My uh my score was a thirteen. That's not bad. Which I guess puts me at a a twelve point five. Mm-hmm. So it, it it's it's not a hard recommend, but it is, you know, if you see it, grab it. I don't I don't think that it's going to offend anybody. It it doesn't have anything that's astringent or you know, gonna make you coil back or, or anything. I, I just think that it's uh it's solid. This is great to mix with Coke. This is great to just sip on for something cheap and replaceable. We, and we have this, literally proven that it is good to, to to mix with Coke. And I think more importantly, <laughs> when you have somebody that comes over to your house and you, gra- you, you give them some really nice bourbon and they shoot it, you take whatever you were giving them, <laughs> you put it back on the shelf, and you grab this. Yeah. Because... Again, it's replaceable. <laughs> I'm actually going to send this to so uh, my my brother's girlfriend loves uh, bourbon and cokes. Mm-hmm. I'm going to send her a picture and say that we've now found one of the best bourbon and coke bourbons. I think so of all time. Um, yeah, that's our that's our review. Uh, we are going to round out this episode by torturing ourselves as we go through uh, some questions and as we do tips and bits. But do first, some Jack Daniels. While we're at it, too, just we may as well straight Jack just compare, Daniels. Just compare the two. Why the heck not, dude? Oh man, <laughs> you invited this. I did. You brought this into my space. This was literally my idea. And about halfway back from the liquor store, I was thinking, "Oh no, what have I done? Oh no." <laughs> So uh, we normally ask our Facebook group uh, for questions. You can find that at Facebook.com. You just search for uh, This Is My Bourbon Group. And uh, we <laughs> Swan's got the full recoil going on over there. Um, but we normally ask uh, that group for questions for our Patreon pregame chats and where we're banking episodes and things are, you know, not what they normally are. We're, we're answering some of those questions here on the main episode. We've got some really good ones, though. Uh, lots, lots of people have been uh, submitting questions for us, kind of long term, and I, I'm looking forward to getting into this. Definitely more so than I am looking forward to getting into this uh, comparison. Swan, you're looking off into the middle distance with regret. Yeah, it just smells like <laughs> I'm, I'm going with the Jack Daniels. It's just like alcoholic muffin, like banana muffins. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, kick this off with a question. I uh, Donnie Webb asks, "Hello, Donnie. By the way, what are you most looking forward to this year? In addition to the birth of your daughter, I'll include you in this as well. I mean, you don't have a daughter being born anytime soon. But... Not that I know of. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to just getting to some some sense of like normal again. I don't know when that'll happen. It may not be this year. It may not even be next year. But just." Yeah, kind of getting a routine because uh, my job has uh, just exploded with COVID, uh, <laughs> and it's not been uh, normal in or outside of work. Just just kind of nailing down a routine, I think, is going to be uh, great. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I don't know what the word routine will mean for me in the coming months. Waking up every hour on the hour and taking care of my sweet little baby girl who I know I love very much and will hold and think about this recording. <laughs> can I can I say something though? Mm-hmm. And this might purely be for me in the future just to remind myself that it it is 100% worth it. I so the baby's flipped. Yeah. Like she she has turned her her head to where she will eventually need to be to be born. And knowing that has been really cool because I was able to, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's pretty brutal, right? That's just the Jack we're ta- Daniels. We're, ta- we're talking about the bourbons, not the, uh, or the whiskeys, rather, not the, not the state of being with my wife. I don't think the birth is going to be easy going either. <laughs> I mean, might be kind of. <laughs> but anyway, so, like, I know where her head is now. I know where the baby's head is. And so I, I laid down on Lucy's belly to talk to her last night. And I could feel, as I was talking to her, Mm -hmm. her head, like, moved towards me, like, trying to snuggle with me and being excited 
about me talking to her. And, and like, it was such a gratifying moment and something that I'm really, really looking forward to. I mean, I feel like I've, you know, started to build a relationship with her, even though she's not here yet. But it's so, it's just so cool. I'm so excited. Yeah, you should be, man. But uh, I don't even know what we were talking about beforehand. (laughs) Oh, we were just. You know, what are you excited to do by the end of the year, other than? Oh, a kid? I want to find a bottle of Old Forester birthday bourbon. <laughs> exactly. I I don't know. I don't really. I mean, I'm excited to see what life with the podcast is like once we find a sense of normalcy. Yeah. You know. I I mean, it is something that. I, I'm going to have to retool a little bit, I'm sure, in terms of process. But, I mean, it's it's going to be... I, I'm, I'm just going to be full baby mode <laughs> after the next few weeks. So, I don't know. Maybe my life will just be consumed by, you know, editing old episodes to be replacing new episodes. I don't know. Honestly, maybe we'll get, like, three different versions of the original podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's one where we all sound like aliens the next one where you know we've got bagpipes in the background <laughs> it's gonna be like two months in and you're gonna start getting comments like perry we this this already has <laughs> so no it has it it's totally different it's a different you can only hear perry in the left ear bud and <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about that no i, I just um it, it's sad because with everything that's been going on, it's like, what am I most looking forward to? Probably the year being over. But at the same time, 2020 as a number, that's all it is. I mean, it's just a number. You know? I mean, if you if you look at it from the, the, the space of, you know, things are just this continually changing ball of nobody knows what's going on. Or yeah. confusion. I mean, January 1st doesn't change that. December 31st doesn't end it. Yeah, no, you're not going to have uh, however many people in the United States going, New Year, New Me, and then all of a sudden the virus is like, oh, you're right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll just exactly. take a day off. But, but regardless of that, with the social change, with the, the way that people are approaching uh, life and everything, I mean, it's just 2020 doesn't define it as you know, insanity or or craziness or or anything. It's just where we are culturally and developmentally. So, yeah, we could see 2021 become, you know, a a renaissance of sorts. It depends on how people react and, and whether or not we wind up treating each other as equals. But different conversation for another time. But I I think that um, you know for the rest of the year I'm just I'm just gonna kind of write it out. <laughs> I don't know what else to do, you know. Yeah. I, I mean there there's I I can only be so proactive or even reactive. So yeah. we'll 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 see we'll see. But I'm so, I am looking forward to what's coming in the next few weeks for me. This benchmark I don't hate it. It tastes more like bourbon than the Jack Daniels does. Yeah, so the Jack Daniels <laughs> is definitely like banana nut muffin and pain. Uh, and then uh, this one is... Did you ever have those Pop-Tarts, the cinnamon streusel ones? Oh, yeah. It's that. It's that, but a little bit watered down. Yeah, but it's that's the thing is it's only that. Like, there's no, there's no other nose to go into yeah. about it. I Have I come around to benchmark? I think we've just had worse stuff now, so this one's just, <laughs> it's just it's somewhere in the middle ground instead Not of at the bottom of the list. Not naming names. I do you ever participate? Oh, I like this one actually a lot. Did you ever participate in musical theater? If so, what was your favorite? I did not, but and I don't think you did either. Uh, uh, in a way, I did. What do you? What does that mean? I was the photographer oh, at okay. Eastern for a lot of musicals and right, stuff. Right, right. So I got to go uh, basically just show up for full dress rehearsals, take pictures, 
And yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It was interesting. I liked it. The dynamic back, like behind stage, was just wild. <laughs> it's nuts. The amount of people, like you find the Jim Carries, the ones that can't, <laughs> the ones that can't get out of uh, character, and it's just fun. Like I don't know. And one of them was a, a guy that lived just down the hall from me when I was at Eastern, too. And I'd go I remember over that. Yeah. And I was like, hey, Baxter, how you doing? And he'd look at me fully in character. He's like, I'm doing marvelous. And I'm like, all right, cool. Um, I shouldn't have taken a drink right before you said that. Do you need any water or anything? Because I don't. there's nothing to really shoot backstage. And he was just like, can you get a picture of me and my friend? And I'm like, yes, sir. And Doosville, baby doll. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's just an interesting group of people to be around. Yeah, I was never in musical theater. Um, my best friend Austin was briefly in middle school, mm-hmm. and we've never let him forget that, um, which is awful because you should be allowed to do what you like and what you want. Oh, yeah. But anyway, um, I I really n- never participated in it. I don't think I ever would have, honestly, because that's not really musically what i am into Mm -hmm. i i like um you know creating my own songs and and doing what i i do as a as a musician but i have totally come around to to musical theater i think in terms of a medium yeah i I don't i don't i definitely don't mind it nearly as much as i did say like 10 years ago i think a lot of people too recently just watched hamilton and just fell in love with it. Well, yeah. I mean, it's hard not to. Yeah. And that that's just kind of a gateway. But also Cats is garbage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a horrible movie. But well, well before the movie came out. Mm-hmm. It has always been just trash. I have never... I, I, will, I will die on this hill. I think that... Tr- <laughs> I think that Cats is not a good Did you hear musical. about the alternate cut of that movie? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just reminded me of the worst part of my brain that stores things that should never be remembered. That's going to have to be one of those, we're not bleeping it out, we're leaving it in, we're just, it's going to be, if you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going into detail about that at all. <laughs> You have Google. You can look it up. Yep. <laughs> I'm not talking about it. <laughs> How about a question <laughs> from Don Nishida? What is your most embarrassing drunk story? This should be reserved for Patreon. But like I said, worlds are colliding and we should uh, we should throw that in. Oh, I'm... You used to drink a lot of Fireball. Yeah, I've got one of those. <laughs> I've got one of those. Uh, I, uh, I was downtown having some drinks with my friends in Richmond and yeah, you yeah, were, yeah. you were actually gone that night, but, um, I was with a couple of people and this was back when I had like really first started drinking and I didn't really know what proof did, you know, how drunk you would get on this, that you should probably drink water, have some bread, kind of mentally prepare and also yeah, yeah. deescalate from drinking. And, uh, I just I just went full bore, man. I just had plenty of drinks. I actually liked what I was drinking, so it was just kind of tasty. And I just I had a lot of it. And uh, I got back to my my dorm room at the time and realized I don't have my keys. I don't have my wallet. I remember this story now. <laughs> I have my phone, but that's it. <laughs> and so then I I <laughs> decided, well, I I don't know where they are. You know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go to the art building because the art building's always open. And so I walked over to the art building, which was across the street from my dorm at the time. Yeah. And uh, I was like, you know, those art classrooms are really cool. They got couches and everything. I'll go sleep <laughs> on one of those. And the next morning, I woke up in the Mac Lab drooling all over the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the painting room. Not where you could sleep on a literally couch. Literally the most uncomfortable room in that entire building, <laughs> drooling on the keyboard, somehow logged in. And the sad thing was is I wish I had woken up naturally and just gone back to my life and asked for a copy of my key and student ID no, and all no, that. No. No, no, somebody walked in, they're like, Are you are you okay? Are you everything good? Did you sleep here last night? And I'm just like, no, 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 uh uh-uh. nope. 
Definitely didn't. Just going, just going. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then you look down at your watch and you're like, I've got an 8 a.m. drawing class in 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah, you could have missed at least three or four of those and you would have been fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good old Travis. <laughs> Mine comes from a, a solid night of drinking at uh, my father-in-law Brett's house uh, where his buddy, Greg Baldia, our buddy Greg Baldia, who is now a, uh, a bartender in Fort Myers, and actually he's got a, a, a podcast that he's starting up here soon too, all about cocktail co- uh, culture. Nice. He just went ham on cocktails that night and i mean he was just experimenting and going what do you think about this and that and i you know i was drinking everything basically that he put in front of me so (laughs) uh the last cocktail of the night we were trying to uh sober up a little bit so some spam had been made to counteract some of that it's not gonna help at all but yep (laughs) Yeah. Um, Let me just say, the last cocktail of the night was bourbon and egg white and rimmed with Spam. (sighs) Okay, I'd rather drink Benchmark for the rest Um, of the episodes. Yeah, I was supposed to uh, to, uh, accompany at church the next morning. (laughs) Nope. I called in sick. (laughs) It was bad. It was bad. So, that's that's embarrassing enough. I think. How about another question? <laughs> yep. yep. Please. <laughs> Quickly. Please. <laughs> uh, actually. Oh, here's one. I uh, Dave Hopper. How well does whiskey age bottled? Um, I feel like it depends on how it's kept, and yeah, it's all about how you store it. Yeah, and if it's already starting to air out a little, like, do you does it have a good seal or not? Because you've had quite a few dusties at multiple different fill levels, and it seems like the higher the fill level the better. Yeah, and and I, I think that part of that also has to do with the evaporation of the bottle inside. You know, if it's not sealed well, and, you know, how does the, the whiskey inside then react? I mean, if you, have an, if you have a bottle that is not well kept and then is also placed in direct sunlight... It's going downhill. It's not going to be pretty by the end of it. Yeah, it de- it it just really depends on how careful you are. Yeah, and it also depends on the bourbon too. Like I mean, we've said it before that uh, Heaven Hill and uh, Turkey Corks, uh, they they hold up for about ten years, and after that they start struggling. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so it just it depends on the on the brand as well. Synthetic corks kind of being a new thing in the past couple of years. I'm excited. Don't mind them. Yeah. I, I think later really in life, I'll them. really enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that'd be nice. Yeah. Well, that does it for questions this week, actually. Yeah. And uh, now we just have tips and bits. Yeah. Oh, I need to pull it up what I Did have. you ever... So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of kick this off. After we got done recording last night, you were played... That's not the way I want to phrase that. I played for you the music of Jacob Collier. Yeah, I listened to some more of that today. He's so good, right? He is good. He's uh he's a good transition artist. If you listen to a lot of like uh alternate kind yeah, of stuff yeah, yeah. and then you're like I also I listen to some, you know, bluesy stuff, but it's not it's not like in my wheelhouse. Right. That's the guy to smooth over that transition right yeah. there. He is kind of that like best of all worlds, I would say. Like he he's just top notch musician and also a really great songwriter. Has some really inventive ideas, but he does it in a way that you know touches on all of these different genres and everything. And I I've talked about him on the show before, or at least I did. <coughs> Excuse me. With Curtis on the last episode he was on, or the best available bourbon episode that he was on. I don't know if he might have showed up since then. Anyway, uh, but I I just, I'm so fascinated by him. I think he is so well-tuned, not just as a a musician, but also as an engineer in music. Mm-hmm. I, like, I when when you got here today, 
I was watching a video of him breaking down how he layers tracks in his in his audio files, mm-hmm. and he had over six hundred tracks. <sighs> normally, normally, on an episode, I'll layer three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> last call usually about ten. Yeah, by the end of it, it just like six hundred is mind boggling to me yeah so it, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of work i think he just does everything to the absolute t and he's incredible I, I think that he's got a long life of music and uh you know respect ahead of him and the fact that he's younger than me too <laughs> yeah it makes, it makes me sad because like that that means that I wasn't doing enough <laughs> musically, <laughs> but still, it happens. I feel just, like every college athlete uh, gets out of college, and then they're looking at like, "There's this punk who's 18 playing for UK, <laughs> and I could barely get a you know scholarship at some yeah, random yeah. Christian college in the middle of nowhere." It's like, ah, so just mad. Yeah. But anyway, that's, that's everybody. That that was my revisited tips and bits. I guess. What yeah. do you have? Uh, I watched a movie today. Whenever this comes out, it might have been on Netflix for a little while, called Project Power. Oh, with Jamie Foxx. With Jamie Foxx and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Right. Yeah. That's the first movie that Joseph Gordon-Levitt's been in in a while, I think. Yes. Good while. Yeah. Yeah. And he's one of my favorite actors. I really enjoy watching a lot of stuff he's in. I've never seen a movie with him that I have disliked. I love him in 50-50. Or at least not disliked him in. Yeah. Did you ever watch 50-50? I haven't. That's with uh, Seth Rogen, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great movie. Yeah. I mean, he's just such a versatile actor. I feel like he's one of those that waits for parts to come up he's interested in instead of just taking what he needs to make money. Do you, do you know about the uh, Bill Murray voicemail box? No. So he doesn't really take pitches from studios anymore. Mm-hmm. What he has is a phone number and a voicemail box. And if you call in and leave him a really good pitch for a movie... He there there's like a you know two percent chance that he'll hear it, but if he really likes what he hears, he'll I'll take jump, it. He'll jump on it. That's great. I don't even know. I don't even know the phone number for it or anything. No, but <laughs> I, I love that man. There's so many like things you look up, and it's just like him stealing somebody's fry at a yeah, restaurant, yeah, yeah. and he's gonna be like, "Go ahead, tell everyone. Nobody's They're not gonna, gonna believe, believe you." you. <laughs> and then he just walks away. <laughs> No, it was just really good. The concept is insane. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it, it's just nuts. And it's one of those that, honestly, the first 45 minutes, you're going, what is going on? Someone yeah. give me the puzzle pieces to put this together. But as soon as it does click, the rest of the movie is fantastic. So I've heard that um, some of the concepts don't totally land. No, no, it is very outlandish. Yeah. Uh, but you get the sense that they could make, like, four of them and fully explain it over time. Uh, sure, but it's uh, there. There's a lot that I feel like a second when a watch would help with, right? And then there's also some that you're looking at. And you're like, oh, you know, <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm gonna believe it because you're Jamie Fox, but I don't. I don't know about that. Do you think that it will, you know, get a sequel eventually? I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Uh, I mean, it's gonna be Netflix's decision obviously because sure. it's their movie when they i'm sure look just at views um but i don't see why not i think it'd be interesting yeah he did another one uh called bright i think not too long ago <laughs> that was will smith that was will smith yeah but it was that same kind of like outlandish concept like dark same shooting even like the it was the i don't know it yeah. was very uh, very similar in like how it was done uh, but this one, bright, bright was an okay movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to kill two hours. Yeah, that's. I think that's what a lot of like Netflix original content feels like. Yeah, there, there's nothing just groundbreaking aside from like Stranger Things, Stranger I guess. Things, The Crown. Yeah, and uh, also their docu series that they do. Are usually oh, like yeah, held yeah. in like super high regard. That's really that. Yeah, that's a really really good point. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Well, that's tips and bits for this week, and that's al- uh, that's also the the show for this week, too. Yeah. I don't know what next week's gonna look like. 
We'll find out in a few minutes. Well, I guess it's going to be more benchmark, yeah. (laughs) Thank you all so much for listening to the beginning of this five-week series of us reviewing the new benchmark products. Swan, where can people find you on social media? I'm at my bourbon finder on Instagram and Facebook. And I am at P Ritter 1492 on all social media channels. You can follow the show itself at my bourbon pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can leave us a five star rating and review on the iTunes podcast app or wherever you listen to podcasts, depending on whether that is available to you. And if you do leave a review, we'll read it out here on the show because why the heck not? We love everybody who listens to the show and we appreciate you guys. Uh, for for trying to spread the news. It really does help us kind of get bumped up in the algorithm to get more people uh, listening to the show, seeing it, if they even just search for Bourbon Podcasts in their app. Uh, So we appreciate everybody who does take the time to do that. You can find all of our apparel and merchandise at bourbonshop.threadless.com. If by the time this uh, episode comes out, COVID's still a thing and uh, you need to protect yourself, Go get a mask from uh, uh, bourbonshop.threadless.com. I have one on the way as of right now. I also uh, am donning my This Is My Bourbon Podcast t-shirt and rocking my This Is My Bourbon Podcast phone case. So <laughs> I need to get on that. I yeah. pretty much just wear black t-shirts. <laughs> Uh, you can also send any of your questions or comments to this is my bourbon shop at gmail.com. If you would like to leave us a barrel rings as well, you can do that by calling 859-428-8253. You can leave us a little voicemail. We'll listen to it, and uh, we'll respond to it on the show. And then last but not least, you can become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash podcast for as little as a dollar a month. It helps keep the lights on. But if you donate $5 a month, then you get bonus content like the pregame chats, the last call, which usually comes out with regular episodes. We'll wind up getting back to those uh, here soon. Hopefully, I think. Um, <laughs> but you also get bonus episodes. You get links to uh, hangouts and chats and all sorts of good stuff. Uh, we also have to thank a patron of the show, as we have been doing over the, the past few weeks, Joseph Brazo, all the way from Washington State. Joseph has not just been a patron of the show, but he has sent us bottles of oh, yeah. Woodenville, which is a fantastic bourbon. Uh, made up in in Washington, and it, it, we we have a product as well that's going to be included in our uh, double barrel episode. <clears throat> Excuse me, which should be coming up uh, basically right after our our benchmark episodes, I think. Yeah, so we'll we'll get into that soon. But Joseph, thank you so much. You have been a patron of the show since 2018. September of 2018, actually. And uh, we, we really do appreciate all of you who support the show. That does it for this week. Coming up next, more Benchmark. More Benchmark. <laughs> more Buffalo Trace. But until then, I'm Perry. And I'm Swan. And this is my Bourbon Podcast. <laughs>